friends and welcome back to the channel. It has been such a long time since I filmed like a sit down video with you guys. It's just, it's been so hard trying to find the time to film and edit a video when you were responsible for a tiny human being. She's currently just sitting next to me playing. But I miss creating videos and I really want to get back into the groove of creating on YouTube again. So I thought to myself the other day, if I could just create like five minutes if I could just do a five minute video every single week or every couple of weeks until I get back into the groove of things, you know, no pressure, just five minutes. And so today, this is our attempt to create a video. This is gonna be a bit of a long introduction. So if you just want the tips, then I'll leave timestamps down below so you can just skip to it. But before we get into the actual video, I do want to cover a couple things. One, I wanna give a huge thank you. Back in June, actually, shortly after Victoria was born we actually hit a thousand subscribers here and I never got to like say thank you or anything like that back then just because I wasn't even creating YouTube videos while she was only a couple months old so thank you so much for that it really means a lot that people subscribe to the channel people watch the video so thank you thank you the second part is before Victoria was born I was posting my videos pretty much every Saturday and I think I'm gonna change the schedule so instead of of Saturday I kind of like the sound of like five minute Fridays so I'm gonna post these on Fridays so today as I'm filming it it is it's Tuesday so hopefully I'll have this video for you guys this Friday so anyways those are the two things I wanted to cover getting back to the main purpose of today's video I wanted to share some tips when it comes to getting lifestyle pumpkin patch photos so last weekend we took Victoria to the pumpkin patch for the first time and there's a couple pumpkin patches here in the Okanagan we took her to one of the best Davidson Orchards up in Vernon and we had such a great time it was is awesome I got so many good photos I got like a little cinematic film going on if you don't follow me on Instagram I post over there way more often I'm pretty much always on my stories and I post like once to twice a week over there so definitely go follow me on beautifully wander on Instagram if you want like more up-to-date content and stuff like that because I don't always post those cinematic short films those photos and everything here on YouTube so anyways we took her to the pumpkin patch took a bunch of photos and everything and I know there's a lot of other like friends family just people in general that are going to the pumpkin patch because that's what you do in the autumn and they're taking photos of their family of their time there and so I wanted to share some quick tips when it comes to taking your pumpkin patch photos and kind of up leveling your photos so going from kind of a beginner and maybe you just want to create a little bit more quality a little bit more fire pumpkin patch photos so anyways without further ado let's get into the video so tip number one is definitely plan ahead this is really important so you know your family best you know your baby best so especially if you are going to the pumpkin Pumpkin patch with a baby. I knew when we were going to the pumpkin patch this past weekend that by the time our friends arrived that we were meeting to go to the pumpkin patch with, Victoria was going to need a nap. And if she didn't get that nap, she was going to be really tired and cranky and any chance of getting good photos or any photos at all or having a good experience at the pumpkin patch was not going to happen if she did not get that nap. So what we did is we actually went early. So we went about in 45 minutes to an hour before they were going to get there. That way we can kind of like experience some of Davidson Orchards before they got there. We brought a scarf, I laid it down, and she can kind of just enjoy the scenery, enjoy what's around her, and then about half an hour before they arrived, she was getting really tired and needed a nap. So we put her in her stroller and we kind of just strolled around like the main kind of part of Davison Orchard and she took a nap. She took a half hour nap and by the time she woke up from her nap, it was just a little cat nap, but she was rested. And so after she woke up, we were able to hop into one of the tractor rides to go into the patch to pick our pumpkins, but it was perfect because she was rested and she wasn't overtired and cranky. And so definitely plan ahead when you are going to the patch because if you have a heavy baby, then the photos are gonna turn out just that much better. All right, tip number two is to plan your outfits. So a lot of people know about the whole complimentary colors when you were choosing, you know, 
the color wheel and everything so if you have like a green backdrop then maybe you want to wear something red because it complements each other or you know you just look at the color wheel google complementary colors you get the idea something that i have been super interested in loving is actually kind of going for that monochrome look so doing light colors so because we were going to a pumpkin patch and there was going to be a lot of like reds and browns and oranges and kind of autumn colors I decided to put her in light colors. So we had the a burnt orange Thanksgiving skirt that she wore Thanksgiving and it was perfect. So I put her in that and then I put her in like a white onesie with like a V that's got her initials and that's something I embroidered myself for her. And then the rest of her outfit was very light and like cream and everything. And so I planned her outfit first because in the photos, I want it to be about her. This was her first time at the pumpkin patch. And then after I have her outfit picked out, I picked out ours. So my husband wanted to wear jeans and so he wore jeans and a black sweater and then I wore a jean jacket and then a black top and black bottoms. And that way we complimented her as well. She was kind of monochrome with like the background if that makes sense. So definitely plan your outfits because it will show in the photos if you're not like matchy matchy, but it's just, it's very good looking. I don't know if that makes sense. Tip number three is don't cut off hands and feet. When you are framing, just make sure if you're gonna do that full body shot, make sure those feet are in the frame. And what I like to do is I will oftentimes start with that wide shot and then I will work myself in. So like I start with a wide shot and then I'll go medium, maybe cutting off at the thigh or something. Typically it's like my husband in Victoria. So I'll like cut in, I'll cut in off at the thigh and then I'll cut it in even further. And basically it's just her. And so I kind of got this like wide, medium, close up shot. <laughs> She's playing, I don't know if you can hear the thing. All right, tip number four is to get low. So if your child is sitting at the pumpkin patch, you know, you've got some pumpkins, you've put your child in front of the pumpkins or you're doing tummy time and you want to take some photos and whatnot, get to eye level with them. If you get down low, get to eye level, then you just have a much better photo. And this is what I do for all of my photos. Whenever I'm taking photos of her, I'm always like crouched down on the floor or I'm lying on my belly or something like that because I want to get eye level with her. Tip number five is taking a shot versus a series. So if I was going somewhere and I just wanted one photo of us, then a front facing forward photo is probably what I would go for. But I almost never go anywhere and only want one photo especially of her because I take a bajillion photos so what I like to do is I like to create a visual story so I get a collection of photos that tell a story of our time there so if you want a visual story like that then you're gonna want a mix of photos so don't just get a bunch of front-facing photos of you <laughs> smiling at the camera Oh, are you okay? You want to mix. So you might want a mix of sort of like candid, unposed documentary style photos where you're just kind of following along, taking photos. Of course, you're going to want some maybe front facing photos of yourselves there, but then you're also going to want a mix of, you know, that wide, medium, close up photos as well, a mix of different people in the photos. So maybe you get photos of all of you as a family. Maybe you get photos of a mix of just like the dad and the kids, mom and the kids, the kids themselves. So that's something that I oftentimes do is I create a visual story and those are kind of the things that I go through when I am taking all of my photos at an activity. Yeah. Tip number six is to oh edit and curate your photos. So whenever I take photos, I always edit them before they go to social media. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, she's being really vocal. So I'm gonna... All right. Hey Victoria, you gonna do a video with me? Hey? So whenever I post to social media like Instagram, Facebook, I always edit my photos before they go up. And so I use the program Lightroom and I, of course, like I take all of my photos with my camera. So I load it into Lightroom. I edit all of my photos, making sure I'm choosing the best of the best. And then after that, I will post it to Instagram and Facebook. Now, if you don't have Lightroom, then there are other editing softwares you can use. So I'm pretty sure the Lightroom 
like phone app is free and then there's also like visco i used visco before i started using lightroom or you can even use like the native photos app on your phone because you can actually edit in there but the point is edit your photos because it kind of just adds that extra level to your photos and then the next step to that is curation so before i post the photos i also make sure that like are the photos i'm telling tell a story are they the best of the best images and sometimes i don't want to get rid of all duplicates just because oftentimes i love her facial expressions like she's just got the best facial expressions in the world and so when i'm taking a photo sometimes she'll give me like super awesome facial expressions and it's so hard for me to choose which one i want to take and so oftentimes i'll like put it into a collage or something just because i absolutely love them but but definitely curate your photos like don't just get home take all of the photos that you took at the pumpkin patch and just dump it on Facebook or dump it on Instagram really kind of think through the photos and kind of play out and tell a story with them maybe create a collage tip number seven is to clean your camera I'm really bad <laughs> So I'm really, really bad about this. I'm better with my phone and before I take a video or photo on my phone, I just like give it a wipe on my pants or my sweater, but I'm really bad with this camera. And you know what? As I'm filming this, I realized I was supposed to wipe this lens before I started and I definitely did not. So hopefully you won't be able to tell, <laughs> but um, you can tell in the film that I had created over our pumpkin patch visit that my lens is dirty and I did consider like just not putting the footage in but I ended up doing it because I like the video so definitely just give your lens give your camera a wipe because it will do wonders it will actually you would be surprised on how much it improves the quality of your photos tip number eight is pay attention to if you are going to be uploading to Facebook or social media to Instagram okay I'll put you down you want to go down all right if you are going to be uploading to Facebook or social media, then pay attention to like when you're exporting it and you're uploading it that you're not losing the quality in the photos. And this part I still like honestly struggle with when it comes to Instagram. And for the longest time, I actually create a lot of reels when I'm posting the photos because I like to combine video and photos at the same time. But a lot of times when I am creating the reels at the beginning, it would always go super weird. It would always like go super contrasty and I didn't understand why it kept doing that. And I would get so frustrated and I eventually gave up and I was like, oh, I just give up with the reels. Until I realized that the editing app that I used to do short form video on my phone was actually exporting the videos HDR. So when I uploaded it to Instagram, it was going all weird and funky. So long story short, pay attention when you are uploading your photos and video to social media because you spend all of this time trying to take beautiful photos of your family, of your, of your kids, of your baby, and then to upload it to a platform and then they lose all of the quality in the image and it just looks not very good. It just, it sucks. So definitely pay attention to that because it'll also help improve your photos. Tip number nine, don't forget to put the camera down. So I'm really bad at this when we go places. I just, I love her so much and I love to taking photos of her because she's so photogenic and she gives me happy faces and she's just so so cute and so I just want I just want like a million photos of her and a million videos of her and so it's really hard for me to put the camera down but you have to remember to put the camera down because you also want to be in the moment with them so something I try doing is I only take a little bit of time and this is kind of why I like video sometimes because sometimes with video I feel like I can just I can get the clips the b-roll a little bit faster I just get whatever it is I need and then I can put the camera down or I can almost like set it in for get it in a way so but just don't forget to put the camera down I this is something that I work on and something I have to remind myself to do every single time we go anywhere my husband knows I love taking photos of her and I've been bad about it in the past and I'm even worse about it now with her but anyways yeah just don't forget to put that camera down and be in the moment because it just doesn't happen again so 
those are my nine tips. I really wish I had another one to round it off to 10, and I'm sure I could think of one, but I'm just gonna stick, I guess, with nine for now. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you are a mom, dad, parent, you are taking your kids or your niece, nephew to the pumpkin patch and you just wanna take better lifestyle pumpkin patch photos, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe because I'm hoping to make these five minute Fridays, although I'm pretty sure, what am I at? Oh, this is thing is saying I'm at 17 minutes. Okay, so this might not be a five minute Friday video, but if you want more of these five minute Friday videos, then definitely give this video a and myself a subscribe. That doesn't make sense. Give give this channel a subscribe and i'll see you in the next video say bye victoria